Okay, so since <laughs> everybody speaks English, the, the opening of the symposium will be in English. Mais tu peux dire trois mots en français quand même. Bon. Donc ça tombe bien parce que j'ai préparé en anglais. Um, welcome. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lionel Larré, the president of uh, Bordeaux Montaigne University. And so Bernadette um, asked me to, to say a few words, a few welcoming words, which I'm very uh, happy to do. I'm very glad to, uh, to welcome you to Bordeaux Montaigne University and to its Maison des Sciences de l'Homme de Bordeaux. Thank you, thank you, Rémi. <laughs> Um, Maison des Sciences de l'Homme de Bordeaux. Um, so it's M S H, and it should be B, but it used to be A, uh, because it used to be Maison des Sciences de l'Homme d'Aquitaine. Uh, so, so we need to ask the director to uh, to paint over the the A and make a B. Anyway, this is um, uh, Bordeaux Montaigne University is one of the few universities in France. Uh, completely dedicated to the humanities and social sciences. Uh, nationally, there are only seven or eight universities which are completely dedicated to these disciplines. Among the Bordeaux Montaigne uh, colleagues I see on the program, uh, there are historians. There's at least one political scientist specialized in Chinese studies, a specialist in Japanese studies, a specialist in American literature, and of course, your host, uh, Bernadette, whose work has focused on Native American studies and new religious movements in North America. With the fields that all of our guests, all of you, uh, represent today, sociology, economics, history, law, cultural studies, and religious studies, covering China, Japan, the US, France, Korea, Vietnam, Canada, Russia, Ukraine, Taiwan, this very international conference does what science should always do to understand an object under study, which is examine it from all possible angles. And this is what we like to do at Bordeaux Montaigne University. This is exactly what uh, this university aims to do, examine social and cultural objects from a diversity of uh, viewpoints. In our university, there is also a master's degree focused on religion and society, which was created by Bernadette a few years ago, and which is now under the responsibility of Jean-Pierre Moisset, uh, whom you, you, you're going to hear uh, tomorrow, I think. There is also a research group in war studies. I don't know if there are any representatives uh, in the room. Riyadh, Riyadh. <coughs> okay. Uh, it's a new research group. Um, but those two elements, of course, uh, present, uh, uh, which characterize uh, our university, uh, make it even more uh, logical to organize this symposium uh, focused on uh, religion, war and peace. <coughs> so thank you, Bernadette, for organizing it. Thank you also, uh, Klima, uh, one of the two research groups uh, which uh, finances, I think, Finance. if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the symposium. The and D2. yes, one of the two, I said. <laughs> and of course, the Dezia, the new, a new um, uh, research lab focused on uh, Asian studies. Uh, and the two directors are, are here, Rémi uh, uh, Casté, who, whom you will hear to, today and uh, Stéphane Courallet, who is not co-director at all. Thank you, Stéphane, anyway. <laughs> um, so thank you for organizing this event. Thank you, uh, Bernadette, for asking me to uh, open this uh, symposium. Unfortunately, I won't be able to, uh, to listen to any of you. I'm, I participate in a symposium myself to, tomorrow in Toulouse, and today is, uh, is pretty uh, overloaded. But I, um, I welcome you, and I wish you a very productive uh, symposium on this important topic. Thank you very much.
Thank you indeed. Well, I think uh, Bernadette wanted us both because we are both, we, the two of us are our close friends, but we are sort of a bit of a, well, there is one too many, me, <laughs> because the uh, <laughs> Lionel's introduction is basically, well, he has said everything. Um, so I'm not going to repeat things about the uh, research groups. Um, just for me, this is exactly, well, today is a bit of a special day. I'm going to mix the two because it's a... Uh, uh, I'm not going to say the final conference by Bernadette, but she is uh, she has retired, and this is and today we were also celebrating tonight, and I think she didn't pick the date by chance, so we are going to celebrate her retirement uh, with you all, and this conference clearly looks like it's very Bernadette like, because um, uh, well what Lionella said about you coming from all sorts of different places, all continents basically, has always been one of her trademarks. Uh, her conferences have always gathered people from all over the world. And so that's always very, very pleasant uh, that you should come from everywhere. And that net, but that uh, Bernadette has built, uh, and it's not only to celebrate her, she has managed to build a this network of academic friendship that is so important for research because that's, uh, well, you're not strangers to each other, I'm sure, and uh, certainly no strangers to Bernadette. And uh, over the years, having people in universities who managed to create such, um, yes, um, networks of both work and friendship is very, very important um, to work on subjects that are, uh, that gradually gain in depth um, and um, international collaboration. So all that Yonella said about the, um, well, the cross-fertilization of arts and discourse and social sciences for these specific objects is very, very true. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat that. Um, just perhaps a compliment on the group that is called GER, uh, here, so it's G-E-R, uh, which is a, a sort of, um, well, it has been created through or copying the American way of studies like gender studies, food studies. We've been developing such objects in Bordeaux Montaigne in the past couple of years mm -hmm. and particularly uh, one on war studies where uh, we use the the outlook, the perspective of social sciences to look on, to, well to analyze this subject that is, mm, well, typically more analyzed through, uh, I don't know, politics or uh, angles or economics, uh, angles that are not uh, the angles of social sciences. And so uh, I think it's very, very important that we should do that. I'm not at all going to try and say a few words in five minutes on a tiny subject like religion, war and peace, <laughs> because it's obviously so big that... Uh, it cannot be dealt with in, in a couple of words like this. But I just want to say that I am personally very glad that universities should take it upon, themse upon themselves to tackle such, such subjects, to take them out of the, I don't know, the sound and fury of the media <laughs> and um, recapture the very important role that they have in um, analyzing these subjects with all the critical distance, the historicization that they need. And so I, I, I do wish you a very profitable, pleasant conference before uh, meeting you tonight, I'm sure. For, uh, uh, well, uh, for a celebration. For the celebration of the diva. <laughs> <laughs> and of the divine, of course. <laughs> of the divine, and I, I wish I, well, had I prepared. <laughs> Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Bernadette, for being once again a very good uh, academic sport, uh, as the English say. Okay. So thank you very much well, and have a good you. conference. Yeah. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> so, of course, you will have understood that these are among my best friends for years, for years. I mean, Lionel is almost my son. Is my spiritual son, yes. <laughs> your, sure. Yeah, your parents are exactly my age, yeah? yeah? Sorry? Your parents are my age, yeah? Yes. 
All right, so here I wanted to thank, I'm not going to repeat the general um, welcome that you have just received, but I wanted to thank the people who have helped me uh, put together the conference. Uh, Pascal Antolin, who runs now the, uh, my research center, who has been keeping the little money allotted to conferences for five years, because originally I had planned this conference for 2000. 18, then 19, then I had two other conferences to organize. Some of you came at that time. And then COVID, of course, postponed everything. And in January, she said, well, you still have the money. So I said, well, let's go. And very generously, Rémi Casté, when he saw that half the participants would be talking about Asia, added the same amount of money, which was very unexpected and extremely generous. No, thank you, really. So I would like also to thank, of course, the, uh, the Maison des Sciences de l'Homme de Bordeaux-Aquitaine, so the house itself, but it's run by the two of you at the top, so thank you for allowing us to have this venue for conferences, because as I will repeat tonight, it's where I have been holding or attending conferences for about 50 years, uh, because the house was, I think, opened in the 70s or something. So, you built it. Yes, in a dream. I had a vision. And it came down like the, like the new Jerusalem. Poof, it arrived. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. And so um, I also thank, of course, the director of the Maison des Sciences de l'Homme, Sandro Landi. And I thank all my students who are lined up over there. Uh, and some of them may have a seat, uh, who have accepted to be here today and tomorrow to serve, you know, as interpreters, as uh, helpers in general. And they are the kind of people who make me forget that I am retired because a lot of them are my doctoral students and they keep giving me a lot of things to read, in particular Riyadh, who must be hiding, because the PhD dissertation he gave me in June was 1,200 pages long. Uh, on the war in Korea. And so I said he would not defend it until it was reduced to half. Uh, and <laughs> so it's done. So um, thanks to them, I'm never bored and I, we keep, of course, meeting. So thank you also, of course, to all the people who are here. Most of you are people I've known for years. I'm discovering Stuart Wright because we met, but we had ne never really spoken individually. So you're the only one. And um, Yin also, who is, I can't remember where she is. Oh, yes, you're here in the front. We never see people in the front because we always look, you know, at the back. Who is a new also friend. And I think you're from Taiwan, but you are now coming from Holland. Yeah, exactly. From Amsterdam. Yeah. So uh, we didn't have many people from Europe. In fact, we practically have, well, yes, we have Massimo from Italy, Rosita from Lithuania and Italy. Uh, and we have Jeremy James. Um, I can't see you, but I, oh, yeah, at the end, who is coming from Lyon. Uh, but it used to be in Brunei or something like that. So it's quite a diverse population. And of course, we have our friends from Korea. Korea and Australia for David Kim. Then we have four people from Taiwan. Uh, and then I have my dear colleagues, Jean-Pierre Moissé from here, Bouba Nuhu from here, and there will be more tomorrow. And merci à tous les techniciens qui vont nous permettre d'en tout enregistrer, de faire marcher le Zoom avec le Japon, les États-Unis et tout ça. Uh, je suis allée les voir plusieurs fois pour m'assurer qu'ils seraient là. Je les ai rappelés avant-hier. Il m'a dit oui, 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 c'est bon. <laughs> voilà, donc merci à vous. And I'm thanking all my precious technicians who will be with us for these two days. Okay, so now to give a little, the not theoretical, but a bit general introduction that will help all the students. Yes, Yes, and merci à tous les étudiants d'histoire et d'ailleurs qui sont là pour euh, me faire signer à la fin de la journée euh, votre présence. <laughs> J'espère que vous comprenez bien l'anglais. Oui, oui, c'est bon. OK. So, originally, um, the, I already explained that it won't be long, uh, that it was a Russian project, that the, the, we have a partner university in Moscow that had asked me um, to run a program to compare the relations between the states and religions in Russia and in Western Europe. 
And uh, the Russians are, I'm not talking about the present, but the Russians are generally difficult to work with because they don't answer emails and unlike you all here. So you write to them and maybe a year later you get an answer. So um, I found it very difficult and I almost gave up. My colleague Maris then said, well, you know, give up. So I almost gave up, but then I... I have always finished all the projects I had been interested with. And I didn't like retiring and not having done this program. So finally, I opened, reopened the project in February, mid-February. So here I start writing to the Russian people. And you know what happened on the 24th of February. And so, of course, uh, there aren't many Russians present here. In fact, there are none of them. Uh, Oh, because of the of the war, and uh, somebody will talk about that. So my idea was to examine how religions and violence can be linked, apart from just terrorism, because everybody has been writing about you know Islam, terrorism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and um, there are of course many more ways of looking at uh, religion and violence. First of all, the two are totally connected from the very beginning. If we were a happy people of bisounours, as we say in French, that is to say peace and loving, in paradise, immortal, we wouldn't need religions. Uh, we would need masters to tell them how to behave. We, did, we wouldn't need commandments not to kill, etc., etc. So if violence did not exist, we probably wouldn't have religions. Then uh, how do religions... Uh, orient the way we act. And that's what, of course, Durkheim called, you know, the dynamogenic function of religion. So today, because the subject is so vast, we will only look at three um, aspects of this huge topic, religion and violence. One is how religions can be instrumentalized by politicians or by individuals uh, seeking their own power. But so it's called in the program religion and politics. And uh, it's a huge topic. We will only select a few um, examples. The second point is, of course, the persecution of uh, religions by different states or by different groups. And because we have two major specialists of the question of persecution in China, there will be a heavy focus on China, but also on what can happen in other countries in a more subtle type of persecution, but as we will see in Taiwan with the Taiji Men case that will be explained. And also, um, we will look at the end, so that will be tomorrow afternoon, at how religions themselves can be extremely violent uh, towards their own members in particular. So that's, of course, something that's known. But I wouldn't want the conference, I mean, I wouldn't want people to think that we only talk about how religions are um, used to, you know, and are violent because they've been used by the politicians or are persecuted. Religions also can, of themselves, be extremely violent. And finally, and this is probably what I... Um, maybe if I have another conference, I will organize it exclusively on that. But it's on religions as peacemakers, as diplomats. And uh, because violence is so present in our, you know, planet, on our planet today, uh, I have been very attentive. And in the media, you see all kinds of references to religious leaders trying to appease the situation. Of course, being in France, um, we we'll mostly hear about what the Pope does. Of course, he's Italian, but France is still generally a Catholic country. And the Pope, this current Pope, has been extremely instrumental in organizing conferences, going to conferences to promote peace. Uh, but as uh, I think it was Khrushchev or Stalin, uh, Massimo will correct me, how many divisions, how many tanks does the Pope have? That is, he can preach peace, but what does he have actually, you know, to attack? Combien de division? Um, so here, what I wanted, and I people are coming here, is to see how some religious groups have invented rituals, specific rituals, to cope with the current threats. And in particular, we have our friends from South Korea who have built, a, I mean, a, to a complete theology on doing good, beneficence, and also specific rituals, of course, to try to appease the neighbor. And their religion is based 
what, 20 kilometers from the DMZ? Something like that, yes. So you really want to do something to try to keep the other side happy and, uh, you know, not... Uh, they won't use an atomic bomb because otherwise they would also be atomized if they used it on South Korea. But you want to keep them behind the zone and if possible, maybe, you know, do away with the DMZ. And we also have, of course, our friends from Taiwan who face exactly the same threat, not from the North Koreans specifically, but of course from mainland China. And they have invented uh, very specific rituals for peace, for cross-strait peace, which I found very interesting. So um, this is what I wanted to say. We're going to open the conference. I had to conclude, I found yesterday in the Korean Times, that I read every day online, as well as the Taipei time. But this very interesting article on a huge, the world gathering, the Pentecostal World Conference, which is in Seoul today, today and tomorrow. So you have all the Pentecostals going from all over the world to Seoul, uh, because in fact the biggest Pentecostal churches are in Korea and not in America anymore and we visited the, one of them, Yoido, which is the one organizing this and today and tomorrow they are going with other religious people to the DMZ they're going to Paju uh, so there will be 20,000 people praying <laughs> facing North Korea at the DMZ uh, to make sure that peace is coming. So I thought, you know, I had chosen the conference exactly at the same time. <laughs> so I'm concluding on this and um, I will then, we will then have the, the conversations which will be maximum. So thank you very much for being here.